Now we just learned about in the last video that if we were to take an aromatic halide and let's just take bromobenzene for example and we treat it with a nucleophile so how about sodium hydroxide let's say that we will not expect this to undergo a substitution reaction okay so the the, the phenol process here we will not expect to happen right because this would be a nucleophilic process and we just learned that uh, nucleophilic aromatic substitution requires there to be a strong electron withdrawing group on the aromatic ring in order to stabilize those um, intermediate uh, carbon ions that would result. Okay, so then the question is, how would we explain the following reaction? If I take bromobenzene, and in this case, I'm going to react it again with sodium hydroxide, <clears throat> but I'm going to crank up the heat a bit, 350 degrees, and I'm also going to put it under some pressure. So 2,500 PSI. In this case, the reaction works, and I do see that substitution product. Okay, so maybe it's just the case that I I just need more more energy to make this go. Um, and that's that's a reasonable possibility. But let's look at another related reaction. Okay, same substrate, <clears throat> bromobenzene. In this case, I'm going to add potassium amide. Okay, so this is basically just the um, anion of ammonia as the potassium salt. So potassium amide, this is a very strong base, right? Think of the acidity of ammonia. It's very, very low acidity, which means that its conjugate base is a very strong base. So I'm going to treat this with an extremely strong base <clears throat> and lo and behold, what I get out of this is the aniline. Okay, so in fact that substitution reaction has occurred in this case as well. So the question is why are we seeing um, what look like nucleophilic aromatic substitution reactions um, in these cases when we don't have a strong electron withdrawing group? Well, the answer actually is quite interesting. So what is happening here is not an SNAR mechanism, but something entirely different. Um, and instead, this is something um, that's called benzene, okay? So the key experiment um, for, for this uh, was actually quite clever. So what you can do here is to take your bromobenzene, but it's not just any old bromobenzene. What you're going to do is label one of the carbons. So we're going to label the uh, carbon that you um, have uh, the, the bromine uh, substituted on. Okay, so we're going to do a C13 label. And that means that even though all of the carbons are going to react more or less the same, we're going to actually be able to see where that carbon ends up in the final product. Okay, so if we do that, we add our potassium amide in ammonia. Now, if this was just a normal nucleophilic aromatic substitution, of course, you would just expect the NH2 to end up where that bromine left from. All right? So we would expect to see our aniline, and we would expect then that. C13 to be right at that same position. Um, and you do see some of that. In fact, you see 50% of the product uh, being that, but there's then the other 50% is still aniline, but bizarrely enough, uh, the rest of that isotopic label is one position away. So there's clearly something uh, dramatically different uh, going on and just remember that uh, for an SNAR, you would expect that all of your product would have the, the label there. Okay, so that's what you would expect, but that is not what is observed. Okay, so that tells you that something <clears throat> very different is going on. So what exactly is benzene? What is happening here? So all of the evidence uh, for these types of reactions point to the fact 
that in cases where you've got a, a good leaving group on an aromatic with an adjacent uh, proton on the aromatic ring, let's redraw that, an adjacent proton, and then you have a, a very strong base. Well, this is not just going to be any base, but, a, but a, a rather strong base, so something like a mid, that what can happen is that that base can deprotonate uh, in the ortho position to the, the leaving group bromide in this case and that you can actually eliminate HBr from this molecule and you then get to a compound like this where we actually we can draw an alkyne within that six membered ring. Now that should look very funny and it is pretty funny uh, it's a very reactive species remember an alkyne wants to have 180 degree uh, geometry because of those sp3 uh, sp hybridized carbons um, and in a six membered ring um, you really can't achieve 180 degrees so this is a very strained and unusual uh, alkyne but the idea then is that once you get to that intermediate so just to draw intermediate brackets here once you get to that intermediate okay um, that uh, that this is a symmetric uh, a symmetric benzyne, right? So if I think about my isotopic label still being there, um, otherwise it's still totally symmetric. And so the um, anion, um, the base in this case, could either add to that position or equally likely it could add to the other position because chemically, chemically speaking, those two positions are the same. And so when you do that, then you would get to one of the isomeric uh, pairs Right, so if we, we add to that position, we're going to push the anion over onto the adjacent position. Okay, And then uh, this is now just a, um, an anion. It's a carb anion. And so that's very quickly going to um, find a proton. And in this case, we're in ammonia um, as our solvent. And so that's where the, um, the proton is going to come from. And then we will end up with our product. Okay, and so so that's what is proposed to be going on, and uh, there's there's very extremely strong evidence uh, that that is in fact what's happening. So pretty unusual though. Okay, um, but the whole point here is that um, that you you can in fact do substitution chemistry um, on aromatic rings if you have a good leaving group with a proton next to it such that you can eliminate with a very strong base. Okay, um, But the thing to keep in mind is uh, that positional scrambling. So that's, um, that's the strongest tell that you've got a benzyne mechanism um, along with the fact that you in, in benzyne chemistry you don't have that electron withdrawing group. Um, because if you did you would almost certainly do SNAR chemistry because it's the lower energy pathway. But if you don't have the electron withdrawing group you can't do SNAR and then benzyne is the mechanism that's available um, if, if a substitution is going to happen. Okay, all right, so um, additional evidence for uh, benzyne uh, comes in, well, many, many different fashions, um, but we could just, uh, evidence, um, we could just look very quickly. So there's a reaction that uh, perhaps some of you have learned, um, others may not have learned it yet, and it's okay if, if you don't know it, but um, you, could, you could go uh, to the book and, and learn about this very quickly. Um, it's not central to um, what we're learning right now, but it is just for demonstration purposes. <clears throat> so if you get to a benzyme, right, again, keep in mind that now uh, we have two uh, atoms of the, of the aromatic ring sorry, uh, that are potentially reactive, right? So you might be able to engage both of those in a, in a reaction as opposed to just one of them, which you would normally expect for a substitution reaction. So in this case, if we generate benzyne, we can actually um, do what's called the Diels-Alder reaction, right? So this is a reaction of um, some pi system with a, a diene, um, and you, you get those to come together. Um, so this is the Diels-Alder and again, you can just go to the book and, and just very quickly uh, see what that is in a generic sense. Um, but basically the Diels-Alder uh, product of a benzyme is going to look 
a bit like this. Right, where we've actually reacted across both of those carbons. And so this is very strong evidence for a benzene-like intermediate because both carbons get to engage um, in that chemistry, which just simply wouldn't be uh, possible with a normal um, intermediate. Okay, so uh, hopefully you're wondering what in the world is the structure of, of benzene? Um, how can that possibly exist? Right, and uh, you're probably wondering that because you remember that for a normal alkyne, right, we've got sp hybridized carbons right which uh, really want to have that cch um, angle uh, to be 180 degrees ideally okay so any deviation from that is going to result in strain and so we would normally expect say for acetylene we've got a linear type of molecule and we've got one set of p orbitals that form the first pi bond. So we could put those up and down, for example. And then the second set is going to be completely um, orthogonal, right? Completely perpendicular. And that's how you get your second pi bond. Well, so now put this into the context of benzene. The, the blue orbitals here could represent the aromatic pi system. And then the benzene is actually going to be um, uh, perpendicular to that pi system. So it's going to be sticking out much like uh, we talked about in the case of pyridine where that lone pair is perpendicular to the pi system. Okay, so if we were to try to draw <clears throat> a little bit of a, a, a side on view of benzene. So um, actually, let me, let me use my colors here. So the pi system of the aromatic ring portion of the benzene uh, actually looks exactly like what we have talked about all along for benzene. Um, so we just put one electron in each of these orbitals, um, just like we had, we had sort of talked about. Um, and now the benzene portion is going to have orbitals that are sticking out, okay? And each of those is going to have an electron. And now the weird part is that these somehow need to uh, sort of try to overlap to, to form a bond. Um, but you can probably see that they're not really oriented in the way that you'd want, which is both both of these orbitals parallel to each other so that you get this really fantastic pi bond. These orbitals are at an angle to one another um, because they're, they're substituents on the benzene. And so this is a very weak, um, I, we, can, we can call it a pi bond, but it's, it's a very weak version of that. Um, and this is formed um, not from, formed not from um, sp, orbitals, okay, uh, but instead two sp2 orbitals, each with one electron, are coming together to form a very weird and weak pi bond, right? So the benzene is um, a very unhappy truce, and uh, that's why it's extremely reactive. So as soon as something comes along that can um, add to one of these positions, so a nuclear, nucleophile comes along to add to one of those um, you know, this, the, the pair of electrons that's in that bond is going to jump over to the other side and that's going to be um, a more uh, stable situation. So if we were trying to draw this, not in this side on view, but uh, perhaps a bit, a bit more um, in a flat on type of situation, we might represent the benzene alternatively this way, where we've got these sp2 orbitals each with an electron um, and again some sort of um, communication between those to a very weak pi bond um, but for convenience sake if nothing else we are typically going to draw this as um, a an alkyne looking thing within the benzene um, but keep in mind this is a very special kind of alkene certainly extremely reactive okay so now we've got, you see that we've got two different types of substitute, nucleophilic substitutions on aromatics. We have the SNAR uh, type of mechanism, and now we've got benzene. And um, the, there's a simple way to keep these uh, separate in your mind or to, to decide when um, each of them is going to happen. 
And the thing to keep in mind is that the SNAR um, really requires um, an electron withdrawing group. Okay, it has to have that if you're going to do the chemistry, um, and that positionally speaking, that has to be um, ortho or para um, to leaving group to the leaving group. Okay, and if you if you don't have that, you you aren't going to get SNAR. Um, and if you do have that, if you do a substitution, SNAR, SNAR is going to be the mechanism that happens. Now, if you don't have an electron withdrawing group, um, then, the, then benzene is a possibility. Okay, um, It's the next possibility. But keep in mind here that in order to do benzene, you require um, a proton next to the leaving group. Okay, So that, I'll just say leaving group there. Right, so you have to have, if, you, if you've got, uh, you know, let's just say X as a halide or, or whatever leaving group, you have to have a proton next to it in order to form that, that benzene. So if we um, looked at a molecule like this, um, maybe we've got a methyl group there, one there, and here's a leaving group, but there's no proton next to it, and so this cannot do benzene chemistry, okay? So that's, in a nutshell, that is benzene chemistry. It's the alternative to do nucleophilic attack on an aromatic ring.